should you get the older model of Sony's Alpha line, the Alpha 6100, or should you get the Sony ZV-1 or the Sony ZV-E10? Well, today I'm gonna to talk to you guys about my use case scenario with these cameras over about almost two years now of having these cameras. And I'm gonna to talk to you guys about why you probably should get the Sony ZV-1 over both of these cameras for your content creation upgrade going into 2024, leaving 2023. My name is Squidhead Joe. I am not a camera nerd, but I'm gonna to try to convince you. Let's get into it. Just clear transparency or wherever, I am not a, uh, like I said, a camera nerd or anything like that that really knows about histograms, zebras, um, color correction and stuff like that. Like I suck at all that stuff. I don't really know about exposure or anything like that. It's something that I'm uh, experiencing throughout my journey of using these cameras and doing product reviews and streams and, and content creation education, all this stuff. I'm trying to learn just like you are. Um, but if you're interested in these cameras, I do want to go ahead and give you guys my personal experience with using these cameras. I've tried, uh, I've traveled to Hawaii with the Sony ZV-1. I traveled to North Carolina with the Sony ZV-1 and the Sony ZV-10. I didn't take the ZV-E10 to me, with me to Hawaii because I was worried about like the expenses and stuff like that as far as what happens if I lose this camera and these lenses and just everything like, like I didn't want to worry about that. And being a little bit uh, less intrusive and less showy or wherever with the Sony ZV-1 was a plus. Um, but first off, I started off using the Sony Alpha 6100. It's a really great camera if you're just gonna sit there and have it as a webcam. You're not gonna do talking head videos or anything like that as far as like learn uh, just dedicated ones like this one because the color science in it is starting to show its age as, not, as far as not having color picture profiles like HLG3, S-Log3, S-Log2, Cinetone, whatever, whatever, all that stuff or whatever. I, I don't even know, I'm probably missing some of them. Uh, so it's gonna be harder to color grade and everything, but you can get it to look several, uh, I would say relatively decent. Um, the only thing I didn't really like about this uh, camera was using the kit lens on it. I don't have a problem with the, the, the Sony ZV-E10 having a kit lens or whatever, but if you do get this camera and you're just going to use it as a webcam for Twitch, kick streaming, YouTube streaming, whatever it is, um, I would suggest getting, you know, an actual prime lens or something like that. If it's just going to sit there, you're not worried about zooming or wherever, but getting a lower uh, f-stop, I think it's called, uh, that's better than a 3.5. Uh, something that's like maybe a 2.0 or a 1.8, 1.4, like the Sigma lens, uh, 16 millimeter lens. Um, it's just, it looks way better than having that 3.5. No matter what you do, turning lights up and stuff, trying to light and expose and everything, to me, it just doesn't really look that good, at least in an enclosed space inside. Outside, it, it looks pretty decent or wherever as far as that 3.5, but inside when you have control lighting, you know, blackout curtains, color temperature lights and stuff like that, you know, trying to, trying to somewhat expose, it's just it's just not good as far as low light for the kit lens. It's just not. I would recommend, like I said, getting a third party lens um, and and getting a lower f stop. So, moving on from that, again, highlights great for streaming, uh, not so much for the type of videos that you're seeing right now. So. With that being said, let's move on to the Sony ZV-1. Why am I telling you to get it? For one, Intelligent Auto Mode in Hawaii was crazy good with the uh, ND filter. A lot of people say don't use Intelligent Auto Mode, learn to expose, do all that stuff wherever. But there was several times where we were at memorial services uh, because of deaths in a family, um, traveling around and just like being constantly on the go, visiting people because people haven't seen my wife in for so long and stuff like that. I couldn't, you know, take out a color card and do all this stuff or wherever. So I had to rely on the Intelligent Auto Mode. And I think the footage came out really well. Um, I never had a problem with it overheating as even being in Hawaii and, you know, we can get hot, hot in Hawaii. Um, and just, you know, recording, I'm talking about long periods of times, even through the memorial service and 4k and, and heat and everything like that. And it never overheated on me. Um, the only issues that I have with this thing, as far as like, uh, going out and vlogging, putting on a, a crane, a Zhiyun crane in three, whatever, really great gimbal for it. Um, using it for vertical content, all this stuff, wherever unboxings, just everything in general, it's a really, really good camera. The only thing I have a problem with and the only scenario that I found that might be 
be able to be rectified by using something else is the fact of, um, I would say the battery life, the batteries in it for, for it or whatever, the standard batteries is just, it's, it's terrible. It would, it would drain. So you're going to have to have multiple batteries right now. I think I'm up to like six batteries, uh, with two charging docks for them. Um, but there is something that I had recently found that I haven't got a chance to use because my son is born, so I can't really go out and vlog and do all this stuff. But it's a little device that plugs into your USB port that allows you to use Sony um, MPF batteries for it. And if you use the 970, I think it is the big chunking uh, battery, you can get it to run or whatever and power and recharge your batteries and stuff. So you could do that. Um, and that will probably either you're going to run out of SD card or you're probably going to get it to overheat if you just do it that way. Um, but again, never had a problem or issue with the overheating except for one time that this room, this room in particular got over uh, 90 degrees because uh, on the Govi app, I have a uh, office thermometer that sits like in my office or wherever in the desk further away from any heat uh, distributing, uh, I would say devices like my computer, all that stuff. So, you know, it can really get the ambient temperature of the room. One time it was just super hot outside, 3080 in the PC, lights were going, streaming, editing, um, rendering videos and stuff like that for a while. Came over here to record a video wherever having it in the B cam. And I just saw that warning light came up and then bam, it just turned off to cool down. And I was like, dude, this is the first time in like almost two years it ever happened. And it's because I looked at the phenomena, like I said, and the room temperature was 90 degrees. So I think that that's a win-win scenario for me. Um, and like I said, this camera, other than not being able to have interchangeable lenses, there's our lens adapters that you can put on the camera. I would avoid the Lanzi one. I've seen too many horror stories where people had to go out and get another Sony, Sony ZV-1 or get the Mark II or wherever, or you know something along those lines because it couldn't use the camera anymore because of the adapter and the way it adhesively attaches and all that stuff. And just like I said, the horror stories of it. So I would avoid that stuff. Um, there is another type of adapter, it, mostly popular from newer. I will leave a link in the description to a different company that has the same lens, but it comes with this thing that you can take the lens off and you can put it into this little koozie uh, thing or whatever that you could put into your, your camera bag that protects the lens. So you don't always have to have it attached, but apparently the focal length is supposed to be around 18 millimeters. You're seeing it right now, um, fully zoomed out and everything like that. Um, so this is the, I guess the wide angle that you're going to get with it, but it looks in my personal opinion, the best. Um, and in my personal opinion, like I said, having it intelligent auto mode, having it on gimbals or wherever my arms are a little bit longer than I say, I would say the average person or wherever, but having a selfie stick or a gimbal or something like that, I never had a problem with how much fit in frames for vlogs. Um, and then having a wide angle adapter, obviously that would help. A small rig cage on your camera, wherever will help with that battery door compartment with a tripod mount that everybody complained about when it first came out, which never made any sense to me as somebody who hadn't purchased the cameras yet because everybody videos afterwards would put a cage on their camera, which would solve the problem of their complaints. That's all they kept on complaining about was the grip and the fact that the, the tripod mount wherever would block the battery door. And it was just, it seems so stupid to me because I'm like, you're gonna put a camera cage on it anyways. Why bring it up or anything? Just be, bring it up in passing, but they harp on it so hard when it comes to these certain cameras like this. And it always seems to be primarily the cameras that come out for people who are doing content creation like me, who are new to it, who shoot in maybe intelligent auto mode, who, who are not, you know, well-established content creators like filmmakers and all that stuff, who just, you know, sit down and do a talking head video like this every once in a while. These are where these cameras are shine and these are where these cameras are for. So having seen them, like it, it just disgusted me as a content creator and as somebody who is trying to get educational purposes from their videos, I stopped watching them immediately. All right, Future Squid here. I forgot to mention one crucial thing about the Sony ZV-1 that's also kind of a downside that the Sony ZV-E10 does have over it is the fact that the Sony ZV-E10 does have a headphone jack or a headphone port to be able to listen to your audio wherever through headphones or wherever and that's kind of what i do to make sure like fan or room uh noise and stuff like that seeing what the the, the noise ceiling is and everything like that um you can do that with the sony zv 10 unfortunately there's no headphone jack and that's kind of like one of the downsides of the sony zv um sony zv1 uh kind of lacks that you know headphone jack or headphone port 
Um, and I know some people care about like the micro H HDMI and like the, the USB-C and all that stuff like that. To me personally, uh, you're not going to be using that port that often if you're using your camera correctly. Like I understand you can plug straight into a computer with both or wherever, but usually if you're going to do something like I'm doing right now where I'm live streaming through uh, OBS and stuff like that, you're going to want to use your micro, micro HDMI port. I know people complain about micro HDMI, but you're going to want to use the micro HDMI port to plug into a capture card. You can find a cheap capture card at Walmart for like 20 bucks from Vivitar. Um, I use it from from time to time, or you can use like an actual Elgato uh, capture card or cam link or wherever, but that's going to be more expensive. Um, but again, doesn't have that uh, audio port. Another thing is, is that I forgot to mention that the SD card, when you have those power supplies uh, plugged in, those dummy batteries plugged in to your camera and you have it plugged to the wall outlet, it's a little bit easier um, getting the SD card out of the ZV-1 without taking out the dummy battery. Um, out of the Sony ZV-1 than it is getting the SD card out of the Sony ZV-E10 uh, with that dummy battery plugged in. I, I don't know what it is. Again, you could just pop out the d dummy battery, but it, it's a little nitpick, of course. But again, mostly I just wanted to tell you guys that if you are going to be wanting to listen to your audio, how it is sounding in camera before you EQ it and stuff like that, see what background noise is picking up and everything like that, especially if you're going out vlogging or something like that. Uh, having little earbuds that can plug into the headphone jack of the Sony ZV E10 is going to help you out a lot. Uh, like I said, unfortunately, you can't really do that. And I noticed even with the little preamp uh, plugins that I use for the capture of my XLR microphones for both cameras, even if I plugged in to that, the, to those preamps um, or even like a wireless lavalier system, wherever, if you plug into the headphone jack of those uh, third party things, it's not going to sh actually show you the type of audio. It's just picking up that mic. You're going to want to actually hear the difference between plugging it into that wireless receiver uh, headphone jack or that little um, iRig Pre 2 amp that I use personally or wherever to capture the XLR inputs from our mics or wherever. That audio is going to sound differently than if you were to plug the, the headphones straight into the actual camera. I don't know why, but that's going to be closer to what you're going to hear in your editing software. So that obviously is a, a pro for the Sony ZV E10 because you can do that and you can possibly eliminate more stuff. So where you don't have to really worry about doing stuff in post or EQing too much or wherever in your editing software. Whereas the Sony ZV one, you're just hopefully, you know, the audio sounds good kind of scenario, even if you were to listen to it through one of the devices or wherever audio devices that are connected to the camera. I don't know why there's a disconnect. It happens on both cameras. I don't know why. Uh, maybe somebody can say something in the comments, but uh, yeah, that's just another experience. Now back to past squid. Um, but yeah, getting a small ridge cage on it fixed that problem. So I wouldn't even complain about it or have an issue. The only thing, like I said, is the battery life. That's the only thing that I have an issue with as far as with the Sony ZV-1. The Sony ZV-E10, this is where I think that I'm gonna have to pivot and actually be kind of mean about and voice my frustrations um it's really a good camera interchangeable lenses um you can get the creamy bokeh background blur and everything like that it's still somewhat small and compact not as, as small and compact as a sony zv1 but i didn't feel comfortable taking the camera to hawaii with the different lenses and all that stuff or wherever um, i took it to north carolina i felt a little bit more comfortable with that but traveling from where I live to Hawaii was a longer process and being on planes through airports and stuff like that, where it's a shorter process for me to go to North Carolina, um, obviously shorter flights, connected flights, all that stuff or wherever, being around my, my family instead of my wife's family and not being in a place I've never been, all that stuff or wherever. So all those worries were, um, you know, put aside for just taking the Sony ZV-1. Um, again, I took both cameras to North Carolina and I had a little bit more fun shooting and finding angles and doing all that stuff in North Carolina with the Sony ZV-E10 because of the, the Sigma lens and just experimenting and stuff like that. And it's been, it was fun doing the vlogging, but again, I keep going back to the Sony ZV-1 for that type of stuff, for vertical content, unboxings, um, B-roll, uh, as having it as a B-cam, 
And like I said, going outside and vlogging with the ND filter on the on my gimbal and stuff like that. It's just, I think that camera is suited more towards that. And this one, I wouldn't say is necessarily for vloggers. They just market it as vloggers, but it's more for content creators who are looking for a good, so solid 4K talking head video camera like a main camera and then you can you can change the lenses depending on what type of b-roll you're trying to shoot and use it for a b-roll but i mostly leave that to my sony zv1 for a b-roll um and on top of that like i said this camera has one glaring issue even with all the accessories everything like that um that one company yulanzi actually came out with a so uh, solution for and it was mainly for the sony zv uh, e1 the full frame brother to these cameras um and that is a fan to go on the back of the camera for overheating now i do not write scripts for my videos um it, it doesn't feel genuine and everything like that sometimes when you script a video wherever it does get precise and to the point and it's very uh educational um, but it depends on the type of content that you're trying to do that I think scripts work for and the pacing and all that stuff. But for content like I'm doing right now, I don't think a script is really good. It feels disingenuous and it feels kind of like you're lying to the audience. In my personal opinion, there's nothing wrong with having key points and talking points and everything like that. And that's usually what I do on my phone to the side or my laptop to the side. And then I talk to the camera or wherever about these problems or issues or whatever it is about a product. Um, so back in the day when i first got these cameras i was not really good at that i was not really good at talking to the camera even though i had been talking to a camera for streaming for so so many years and stuff like that but when you have to just sit at the and look at the camera um all that experience go out the window you, you get really nervous i still say ums and uhs and and stuff like that but sitting here trying to you know convey to the camera and everything like that when you're doing product reviews or whatever it was a little hard. So I would take literally six to eight hours of stopping recordings and pressing record and, and everything like that in my living room because it's a bigger space. So I had more air and everything to to move about. The room would no get no hotter than like 75 degrees or wherever it would stay between 71, 75. Um, and the camera would overheat consistently all the time. So between those six to eight hours there was times where i had to sit there and just let the camera cool off even if i blew a fan on it and stuff like that just waiting for it to cool off constantly um because i kept on you know recording in 4k the highest settings and all this stuff or wherever and it was just frustrating even now um i've been sitting here trying to record this video for i would say about almost three hours now and the room has not gone over 81 degrees in this in this room um, because I have, again, the thermometer looking and just a little while ago, I would say about 30 minutes ago, 25 minutes ago, wherever of recording and everything like that. Sony ZV-10 warning light popped up, had to put the fan on it or wherever from the Govi and um, have it set to like three or four or wherever. So I can feel the, you know, the wind as well, because I can start feeling the heat. But again, camera just overheats. So again, I will put a link in the description to the Yulanzi little fan that go in the back of the, of, of the camera, wherever, from what I've seen the reviews and stuff like that, people say it really works well for all the cameras and it will work for the Sony ZV E10. So I'm gonna be using that. It takes, um, it actually has a battery life, but I'm gonna leave it plugged in and I'm gonna leave it, uh, the USB-C charging cable where we're plugged in and stuff like that. I'm gonna definitely get that in the near future. And it's gonna live on the back of my Sony uh, ZV E10 because I don't take it out of this room and do anything else with it. So if I go travel, vlog, anything like that, I love the Sony ZV-1 for it because I can put it in a, a camera bag or in a camera sling or whatever. It's a little bit easier. Now, if I'm traveling, traveling, as long as I'm staying in the mainland, like States area or something like that, I might take the Sony ZV E10 with me. But, you know, going into stores and stuff, stuff like you could actually sit around and record with your cell phone, those instances, and people won't really look at you weird. I feel like you can pull it off a little bit more with the Sony ZV-1 than you could when you take out the Sony ZV E10. Um, so, Again, nine times out of 10, you're going to have this in your studio. It's going to be your main camera and everything, but you're going to have to have something blowing on it, like some kind of fan attachment or something like that. Um, just be worried about that. You Obviously, you can get cages, microphones, all the accessories and stuff like that. Usually in my kit link that I leave in the description has all the stuff that I use for that stuff. But like I said, my use case scenario, my experience using all three of these cameras, I can't, the, the winner is the Sony ZV-1 there's the price point is a little bit cheaper obviously um you can find it on keh i will leave that camera website down in the description um there's usually used 
ones up there that are almost like it's like almost a hundred dollars off the camera and everything like that the use case scenarios of it you can use it for your live streams you know whatever platform you're doing it to editing and stuff like that vlogging um it's just bro i can't tell you like other than maybe using that wide angle adapter or whatever, but you can take it off, you know what I'm saying? And still have that small form factor. It's just hard to really beat it. And I would suggest getting the Mark one, cause that's what I have. And it has that in, uh, ND filter on it that you're not going to find on the Mark two. As far as I know, it's not even on the, the Sony ZV one F the one that doesn't zoom or whatever. That's around $500. Um, it doesn't even have that capability. So stick with the Mark one. Avoid the Mark II. I know people talk about the focal length of the Mark II or whatever being wider, but somebody who's used it and used, gets the use case scenario out of those uh, ND filters and not having to get attachments to use ND filters and, and all that stuff. Yeah, you get like the longer, I guess, more wider field of view, but you're losing out on, you know, the ND filters. And yes, like you can zoom in a little bit more on the Mark II and still stay at F1.8. You can't really do that on the Sony ZV-1. As soon as you start zooming in a little bit, you lose the F1.8. Um, and that's kind of the drawback. But I would rather have that drawback and have the ND filters on the Mark One than get the Mark II and kind of lose out some of those capabilities. Because again, we're not always going to be able to do exposure right, color correction. All, we're not going to be able to do all that stuff in the camera. And more often than not, when you're new to content creation and you're getting that upgrade for the first time and you're buying cameras and stuff, you're not going to know in-depth things. You know what I'm saying? So I think a good middle ground between letting your camera sit in auto uh, intelligent mode versus uh, learning to start shooting color profiles like HLG3, all that stuff or wherever, that's going to be a good partnership or in between between both of them, wherever it's going to be the Sony ZV-1. So in order not to make this video any longer, I'm going to leave uh, the final tip down in the description to a, a channel that covers HLG3. He has a free LUT and everything like that. You can set it up. It works on both the Sony ZV-1 and the Sony ZV-E10 uh, color picture profiles for the HLG3. So just follow along on the video. It's very detailed. It will show you how to do everything and then download that LUT stick it in davinci resolve i would suggest using this camera stuff wherever in davinci resolve i know a lot of us use one to share for more out there but trying to color correct on the one share for and eq microphones and stuff like that in that program um it's just not going to work uh as well as getting davinci resolve davinci resolve is free it's gonna slow your workload a little bit but if you can just record eq have all that stuff set up wherever lets and everything everything preloaded Throw your footage in there, put all the EQ and the color correction on, render it, take it into Filmora, and then edit it up how you want to. As long as your videos are not too long, it shouldn't impede your filmmaking process or your video recording process. So TLDR, what do you take away from this video? Use the Sony ZV-1 if you're going to be doing a lot of B-roll, a lot of vertical content, unboxings, uh, vlogging and stuff like that. It just the, the capability of camera is too, is too diverse. To, to pick over, to, to not pick over the, the Alpha 6100, even though you could probably find it at the same price, but you get the interchangeable lenses, the Sony ZV-E10, I, I would, again, pick it over. And, and if I had to get another one of these cameras, uh, I probably would get me another Sony ZV-1. And it would probably be the white version, just so I could have white and black, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but if you're gonna do main talking head videos like this and maybe do unboxings and stuff later and stuff and not record at the same time and all that stuff or wherever, Sony ZV-E10 is gonna be great for you. Um, like I said, just make sure that you have a fan strapped to it from the Lulanzi or just a fan blowing period um, to keep that overheating issue uh, you know, negated. But again, traveling and everything like that, if you plan on doing diverse type of content and stuff, not sitting in the studio setup and everything like that, there's nothing wrong with having a Sony ZV-1 as a B cam, backup camera, main camera, depending on your scenario. Um, so you know your scenario the best. Hopefully, you know, this depicts the cameras in a better light and you can make an informed decision on these cameras uh, from my use case scenarios and stuff like that. Uh, if you have any personal experience with either cameras and you want to help somebody else into the comment section, Go ahead and leave a comment down below if you're new to the channel and you want to see product reviews or anything like that and how i use these cameras uh for those stuff 
you can always hit that subscribe button. It helps out the channel. Um, and if you want to check out the sponsors to the channel, there's a links down in the description to Glitch. You can save 20% off a new sponsorship of the channel. Definitely check them out. As well as Fine Fine has sponsored with us, and we've done several reviews of their products here on the channel. They're a very budget-friendly uh, company who have great, great products. You check them out through the link in the description. It's affiliate links. helps me out. And with that being said, y'all take care. Have a squid-tastic day. God bless you and yours. And deuces, everybody. Much love.